Why, hello everyone and welcome back to the adventures of Dermon and Victor and Juan Hildebrand Manderville. Yes. I'm so excited. This is honestly, so I've only, full disclosure, seen the first two episodes of this myself. So all of this from here on is pretty new to me as well. So Ooh. this is going to be fun. All right, Ellie. Uncharted territory. Ellie has put her skills as a reporter to good use. Ah, there you are. I've been doing some investigating of my own since we last parted. I believe I've found our Lapis Maiden. The girl's name is Arabella, daughter of one Master Guguremo, a pre prominent member of the East Aldenard Trading Company. Her eyes and hair a most exceptional shade of blue. Her beauty's the talk of the Sultanate. Her purported beauty, I should say. You see, none have actually seen the girl in the flesh. Apparently her father's the overprotective sort. Some say the Maidens never set foot outside the family's well-guarded estate. But all this is about to change. Rumor has it the girl is to be wed, and not just to anyone, mind you, to the heir of the Brugere, or Brugere? 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 Whatever. Of the Brugere Consortium. The formal announcement is set to be made at a commemorative feast to be jointly hosted by the two family businesses. The venue is Costa del Sol, where preparations are going on as we speak. Word on the street is the bride-to-be will be making a rare public appearance. It's here that the thief intends to strike. I couldn't be more certain of it. Piqued your interest, have I? My sources tell me that the bride's father's already in Costa del Sol overseeing the preparations. This is one scoop I am not going to miss, and you're welcome to come along. Well, thank you. To the beach. Oh yeah, and also, into your party. That's a great idea. Yes. To the beach! To the beach! And raining, of course. Of course. <laughs> Looking good, though. Uh, Gugurimu. You're not one of my associates. This banquet is for invited guests only. If you have no business here, be on your way at once. Beg pardon, good sir. My name is Ellie, reporter for the Mithril Eye. If I might just have just a moment of your... Ah, yes, the two-gill sensationalist rag. I read your tiresome screed of the self-styled phantom thief and his letter of challenge. If you have come to ke tell me my daughter is in danger, I can assure you that your concern is entirely unwarranted. I have not kept my Arabella safe to this day to see her whisked away from me by some fly-by-night fly rogue. I have spared no expense in securing the best protection that money can buy. Whoa, he even afforded slow motion. <laughs> well, that is an intense looking group. The Brass Blades of Ger Gerbera, an elite unit of the most lethal swordsmen in the Sultanate. They say one of them once caused a man's heart to burst just by looking at him as askance. The moment they set eyes on the would-be thief will be his last. I mean, they're brass blades. How good could they really be? <laughs> Burn. If the thief is obliging enough to allow himself to be seen, or do those goggles serve some purpose other than making the wearer look utterly ridiculous? Consulting Inspector Briardian, uh, your reputation precedes you. And what, pray tell, would you propose? I have promised some of the wealthiest men in the realm that my daughter will be attending the festivities. To re to renege on my word would have dire implications for the family trade. My proposal is a simple one. Entrust the investigation to me. The thief will be in shackles before the banquet commences, and it will cost you not a whit of your precious gill. Very well. Let us see if your reputation is deserved. But consider yourself warned. A greater fortunes than you will ever know hinge upon this banquet. I will not tolerate any disturbances. Such touching concern for his coin purse. If only he could muster the same for his daughter. But do tell, Inspector. After he slipped under our noses the last time, what makes you so confident that you can catch our thief this time around? Our man may boast a thousand faces, but he has but a single modus operandi. 
and it is painfully obvious. A letter of challenge, a precious treasure whisked away from its rightful owner in the broad light of day. This tells me that our thief is an attention seeker with supreme confidence in his abilities. Doubtless he means to target the maiden using the same methods he used to abscond with the treaty blade. Even now, the fiend is in our midst, having assumed the identity of someone who will be in close proximity to Miss Arabella at the feast. I've already narrowed the field. Arabella's betrothed, Vanus, would be an obvious target for our thief. So too would be his father, Morgant. Yalto Noto and his wife, Sainana, the guests of honor, will give a toast to the couple's happiness. Both will be standing close enough to the stage where the bride-to-be is set to appear. Needless to say, we cannot rule out Guguremu himself. Finally, we have Lewinhart, a steward of Guguremu's estate and Miss Arabala's personal uh, attendant. All the key players, save for the Lapis Maiden herself, have assembled in Costa del Sol. Doubtless the Phantom Thief lurks among them, his face concealed, gathering information, planning his course of attack. We will begin our questioning of the suspects immediately. Should you encounter any suspicious individuals, you have to report back to me. At once. <laughs> Hildebrand Manderville. I could smell the stench of idiocy and incompetence from a mom away. The pleasure is all mine, contriving Inspector Bryden. <laughs> Forgive me for not revealing myself sooner. I was simply conducting a bit of preliminary undercover investigative work. Yet to see through my ingenious disguise with such ease. Yes, I dare say your powers of observation rival even my own. Fear not, friends. I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, have arrived to defend the maiden's honor as only a Mandeville can. They're into it. <laughs> he fits right in. It's perfect. Amazing disguise. Yep. <laughs> he does realize there's still a fish on his head, doesn't he? Good inspector. I realize we have not seen eye to monocle in the past, but a fair maiden's virtue may have her very life is at stake. From one gentleman to another, let us put aside our differences. Yes, I would welcome your assistance in this case. Me assist you. Aren't you a funny man? Oh, it makes no matter. My plan is so flawless that not even your bungling can interfere this time. If you wish to assist me, you may do so by keeping watch over the suspects. In the meantime, I have a promising lead to investigate. I shall return before the banquet begins. And while I know this may be asking much, do try not to do anything too stupid in my absence, will you? I would speak with you, but not here. I'll be waiting for you outside Costa del Sol. Come quickly, for we do not have the luxury of time. But we do have the luxury of brighter weather, hey! We do! Oh, hooray! Ah, oh, what a relief. <laughs> Hildebrand, you've brightened our day once again. Thank you. Can't believe Hildebrand can control the weather. It's really impressive power. Hello. All right. Sunbathing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you gotta get in some good rest while you can. <laughs> you've come. Excellent. With that buffoon suitably distracted, we can get to more important matters. But before we proceed, what might I call you? An unremarkable name, but it will suffice. Hey, now answer me this, Derman. <laughs> you were there when the Phantom Thief, in the guise of Lady Derilda, stole off with the Treaty Blade. Was there anything about our foe's disguise that struck you as particularly noteworthy? Hmm, the identical appearance, the perfect mannerisms. That is for me to know. Ah, what kind of inspector is Derman? Hmm, let's see. I think Derman is probably falling sway to like the bravado that the other two examples in front of him are <laughs> displaying. So I think he's going to try to start fitting in. You keep your observations to yourself. 
That or you have none of import. Either way, I can respect a man who would listen instead of speak. That is my skill, sir. <laughs> there are two aspects of the Phantom Thief's costumes that, that drew my interest. First, the utter perfection of the physical disguise. A thorough inspection of the mask left behind at the scene revealed a tiny prism sewn into the fabric. It is this stone that allows him to change appearances at will. This, however, was of secondary concern to me. From movements to mannerisms, to that utterly obnoxious personality, the thief did not merely look like Lady Derilda. He was her. Such a feat could not be accomplished by magical trickery alone. We are dealing with a clever and thorough criminal. Not content to rely on his ample powers of disguise, he studies his targets closely before assuming their identities. He emulates them utterly and completely, that not even their closest friends or family could detect that aught is amiss. All the key players arrived at Costa del Sol three days ago, when preparations for the banquet began. This would afford our thief more than enough time to study his would-be target. And yet, some disguises are more challenging than others. Put yourself in the mind of our phantom, Dermon. If you were the thief, whose identity would you first assume? Hmm. One of the brass blades, one of the guests. I'd stay secretive, but I actually would go with one of the brass blades, probably, if no one actually knows them. Precisely. Clearly, you're far less useless than the bumbling inspector whose company you keep. Thanks? I think. Strong in number, few in words. Able to come and go as they please. A fearsome reputation to scare away any who would draw near enough to realize something was amiss. An ideal entry into Costa del Sol for our man. Deducing as much, I made a point to question brass blades in the area. Little to my surprise, I learned that there was a man among them who had not been seen at his favorite alehouse for three days past. Our thief has not made a habit of wanton murder. Doubtless the poor man's lying naked in a ditch not far from here. In addition to general security duties, each of the blades has been assigned to serve as a bodyguard for one or more of the guests. If the man can tell us of his assigned charge, like as not, his answer will reveal the current identity of our thief. Our thief would not have had the time to carry the unconscious man far. I'll canvas the immediate area. You begin your search on the outskirts of Costa del Sol. Okay. It's a lot more complicated. Oh, yeah. Hildy seems to keep this all so much more simple. <laughs> yeah, he runs ahead before, like, anyone has any time to think. Yeah, or explain. Yeah, exactly. Catches the enemy off by surprise. In the time you were describing our subject, or what they stole, or what they did, or who you are, the culprit is getting away. I've already solved it, yep. <laughs> no time. All right. Let's track down our missing brass blade. Goodness, that's a large crap. Our missing oh. brass blade, though. Someone else's problem, that crab. <laughs> they can find the weak point. Yeah. I hope no one comes and directly asks me to handle it. That is one one weakness. <laughs> How are you doing here? Sunbathing? Oh. My friend was just doing that. He is naked. Wow. At least his bits are covered. Excellent. You are one of the less incompetent assistants I've worked with. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank the gods! Please, uh, free me from these chains before the snippers eat me alive! There. Now, tell me that you can remember, or tell me all that you can remember about what happened to you, and try to be brief. Uh, we just arrived in Costa del Sol. I had a briefing of sorts. Master Gigurum... Uh Guguremu gave us each our orders, uh, who we'd be looking after and the like, had a mind to tour the area, get me barons. Next thing I knew, I felt a thwack on the back of my head. When I came to, here I was, stripped to my skivvies. Much to the chagrin of those of us who have to look at you. You say you received orders from Master Guguremu. Who was to be your charge? My memory's hazy, but ah, uh, one was Morgan, father of the groom. The other was a Lalafelin gent from Limsa. Yalto Noto. Now, try your best to remember. Were there any other guests with whom you were ordered to interact? Come to think of it, yes. There was also the steward, Lewinhart. Uh, I was to review with him the schedule of events, discuss the protection of key supplies, that sort of thing. Morgant, Yaltonoto, and Lewinhart. Thank you. For an incompetent fool, your testimony has proved astonishingly enlightening. I shall see this man back to the city and into the possession of some new clothes, after which I shall return to Costa del Sol to continue the investigation. Go on ahead of me, and for the love of gods, just make sure that imbecile doesn't cause too much trouble in my absence. I will try. I mean, I don't have any power over him, but... <laughs> that said, let's go talk to the imbecile and let him know what we've got. Let's do! 
The problem is that Briarden doesn't know my one weakness. Um, nodding is my only method of communication. <laughs> and he just doesn't know how to interpret that yet. What my nod was saying was, there's nothing I can do about this. I'll go tell, <laughs> let me go ask Hildebrand what to do. <laughs> All right, we're back. Ah, there you are, friend, and not a moment too soon, for I was about to commence my investigation in earnest. Tell me, did you and Inspector Briardian's avenue of inquiry bear fruit? Sort of. Morgan Yalto Nauto and the steward Lewinhart, you say? This does not surprise me. Yes, I'd consider them all exceptionally suspect, suspicious from the start. With the Lapis Maiden in danger, we cannot afford a moment's delay. I, Hildebrand, shall have our thief in shackles before the inspector returns. Fear not, friend. The inspector shall be none the wiser. Ha ha! If he had hoped to nab the fiend for himself, he should not have simplified the task for me so. Ah, there is one of our suspects standing suspiciously under the canopy over there. Just you wait, fiend. I shall rip the mask from your face and reveal you for the rogue you are. Oh, this I must see. Yeah, you think the Warrior of Light's just like, you know, let somebody else get in trouble for a change. I'm just going <laughs> to sit and watch. <laughs> I've helped a lot of people. I'm just going to sit this one out and enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Stand back, friend. The man we pursue is a criminal mastermind. The mere slip of the tongue could put our case, nay, our very lives in danger. But have no fear, Miss Ellie. Ready your quill, that you might record my every word as I employ the time-honored art of parley, handed down from Mandeville men of ages past, to reveal our foe. Ooh. I can think of few topics that would interest my readers less than your blatherings. Just catch the thief so I can have my story, would you? Don't worry, Inspector. I brought my quill and journal, too. Your adoring fans won't miss a word. Capital! This is why you are my favorite assistant, Nashu. Now, behold, as I ensnare our prey with a web of words leading to his inev inevitable demise. I can't wait. Good day, Master Guguremu, and a fine day it must be for you most of all. Allow me to offer my most heartfelt congratulations on your betrothal to the enchanting Miss Arabella. What is this nonsense? Arabella's my daughter, you... Just who in the seven hells are you, anyway? Guards! Guards! <laughs> no, no, hold your joke. Blah, sorry, the old really threw me off. <laughs> now hold your joke, Abuz Guguremu. I recognize the lad. This is Hildebrand, agent of inquiry and inspector extraordinaire. Come to save the lovely lass from the clutches of the phantom thief, have you? I reckon we owe the man our gratitude. Ivanis? The Phantom Thief, all to dash and rot, if you ask me. That said, my betrothed must be quite the beauty indeed. I have such rumors told about her. Perhaps she's worthy of me after all. <laughs> he ex exudes an unusual degree of confidence for such an effete, fashion-challenged youth. Most suspicious. Most suspicious. He's a damn sight easier on the eyes than you. <laughs> That's me, Vanis. Ever calm in the face of danger. Truly his father's son. A worthy heir to the Bougier Consortium, and a worthy match for my daughter, I must say. Yes, I foresee many years of prosperity for our families, or family, I should say. <laughs> Which reminds me, Master Vanis, Arabella asked me to convey her gratitude to you for the golden clasp you sent some months ago. It has not left her neck since the day. Oh, that little trinket, t'was nothing. Though your daughter the greatest treasures in the realm will be hers once we are wed. <laughs> you all seem great. The time-honored Manderville art of parley. We'd be sleeping with the fishes now had Morgant not spoke up on your behalf. That said, nothing about the interactions between the three struck me as particularly unnatural. <laughs> Let us not rush to conclusion, Miss Ellie. A gentleman fancies a more methodical approach. Yes, everything is proceeding according to my master plan. Whoops, I was supposed to be taking this down, wasn't I? Everything is proceeding according to my master plan. I sought only to earn the trust of the families before confronting Yalto Noto and Lewinhart, who have aroused my suspicion from the start. Come, we have a thief to apprehend. 
I'm excited. Yalta Noto. Everybody else is playing 4D chess while Hildebrand <laughs> is playing alternate universe checkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's like the checkers chessboard version of Solitaire? Oh, geez. I don't know. Solitaire. That's like ball and cup. I don't know. <laughs> ball and cup. <laughs> the ancient tradition of ball and cup. <laughs> hmm? I've not seen your faces around here with the East Aldenar Trading Com Company, are we? Why, yes, good sir. Very much with them. Uh, some might even say we are the East Aldenar Trading Company. Ha 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 ha. Oh, pleasure to meet you. Do tell, is the Lapis Maiden as lovely as they say? Sinana here is no slouch herself, but like me, she's getting on in years. No, no offense intended, my dear. Oh, but where are my manners? Yalto Noto of the Brugere Consortium, and this is my wife, Sinada. I look forward to many profitable dealings with you and yours in the moons to come. I, I dare say this wedding and, and the joining together of our family businesses couldn't be happening at a better time, what with all manner of fell beasts and beastmen taking aim at our wares. Oh, just the other day, a shipment of important foodstuffs uh, imported. Important, also, was waylaid by the Mandragoras. Nasty buggers, a lot of them. If I were 20 years younger, I'd dice them up myself, make a salad out of it. Hmm? You have heard of the Mandragoras, haven't you? Uh, but, of course! I once spent a year honing body and mind with the fist of Rolger. My fellow monks and I would chant several hundred mantra what's-its a day. And your food stores were occasionally raided by the ruthless band of rogue vegetables known as the Mandragoras, yes? Would it kill you to read the Mithril Eye and educate yourself from time to time? A fearsome lot they are. Rumor has it that they not rest until every fruit or vegetable harvested for consumption has been freed from captivity. Why, they even struck at the larder just here just a days ago. Our supplies were decimated. You came prepared with so many accents, I'm impressed. Oh, <laughs> Uh, benefits of being a DM, I guess. <laughs> Makes sense. Fear not, my lady. I was able to arrange for an emergency shipment to replace the stolen produce. It arrived safely some time ago. Settle down, Sainana. Forgive my wife. She's always saying how meat is bad for her figure. And with that, I'd best go prepare me speech. Carry on, lads. Crip. None of those three were suspicious in the least, but we must not give up hope, lest he of many faces have the last laugh. Where there is a will, a gentleman shall find a way. Come, Nashu, we must move quickly, or the Lapis Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. You speak so fast, Inspector. A sign of a quick mind, I'm sure. Now, where was I? Give up hope, he of many faces will laugh last. The Lapis Maiden shall not be the only one to come to harm. I'm not sure that captures the inspector's intended meaning, but this is no time for us to be standing around. Inspector Briardian will be back any moment now, and he's not the type to suffer excuses. Quite so, Miss Ellie. Fortunately, I have a plan. Let us investigate the foodstuffs of which Master Lewenhart spoke. Should we find any contradictions in his testimony, we can consider the man a prime suspect. Inspector, Inspector Briardian will be back before long. Come, Nashu, this is no time to delay. There's never time for delays. Let's inspect the supplies. See if the story really holds true. Mm-hmm. Where are the supplies? Here we go. They're also quick. Some of those coconuts don't look like coconuts. <laughs> Nasha, what are you doing? Look at this. Now there's water. Now there isn't. Now there's water. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You sweetheart. <laughs> Hildy, how are you feeling? These crates must contain the foodstuffs of which Master Lewenhart spoke. At a glance, they do not appear particularly suspicious, but our investigation must not be deterred. Right. I'll investigate. You ever think that Nashu is thinking like... You know, because like there's not a lot going on up there. <laughs> <laughs> Crates of assorted foodstuffs and a veritable host of luscious looking coconuts. It appears that our man Lewenhart spoke true. Ye gats! Are those explosives I spy concealed amongst these coconuts? Perhaps I spoke in haste. It would appear that we have found our phantom thief after all. 
Oh, those are mine, Inspector. I was looking for a place to set them down, you see, and those coconuts were looking awfully lonely. Nashu! Far be it from me to cast doubt on your choice of hobbies, but what in the name of the Twelve could possess you to bring your creations to an investigation? Well, they were so helpful in jogging your memory that one time, and I just thought that... Um, does this mean you won't be needing this piece of driftwood either? Your enthusiasm is always admirable, Nashu, but in this event I fear it's somewhat misdirected. Now, set the driftwood down over there and concentrate on taking your notes like the astute assistant you are. She's here to help. She's trying. She's trying her best. I say we are most fortunate that confounding Inspector Briardian is otherwise occupied at the moment. We were he here to chance upon this scene, he would veritably explode in rage. Now, let us dispose of these things before an errant ember sends us all to a fire demise. Confounding Inspector Briardian explode a fiery demise. Got it. Are you sure about that? Uh oh. Don't look now, but someone has returned at the absolute worst possible time. You two were supposed to be keeping an eye on the suspects and staying out of trouble, yes? The inspector will have a fit if he sees you here. But, Miss Ellie, should Inspector Briardian come upon these explosives, the consequences will be even more dire. Dermot and I will see that the Inspector keeps a wide berth of this beach. You two just get out of here and be quick about it. Quick thinking, Miss Ellie. Come, Nashu. We shall return for your creations once Inspector Briardian has been led, led safely from the scene. Investigation calls us, and we must needs heed its cry. That is hard to read. It is sometimes. <laughs> Do you find that you just have days? I find that I just have days where I can read well and days when I can't, and I just stumble over every word, and I have no idea what makes the difference. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all the time. Really glad that you're keeping tabs on all this stuff that we're investigating now. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. <laughs> the paperwork is the true work of an investigation. <laughs> all we have to do is lure him away from those crates. That shouldn't be too difficult, right? Oh, I'm sure we can do it. Inspector Briardian would share with you his latest findings. So, Hildebrand has managed thus far not to destroy anything. Consider me something almost resembling impressed. Ha, <laughs> indeed. But enough about Hildebrand. Dermot and I have been waiting to hear your latest theories. We should go somewhere quiet and... An excellent idea, Miss Ellie. Ah oh, yes, that spot just over there by the crates should suffice. There, of all places, but surely we could find somewhere more scenic. I'm not here on vacation. I'm here to solve a case. Besides, we cannot afford to have our conversation overheard. That junk-littered beach should afford us some welcome privacy. Y yes, Inspector. Privacy, indeed. Bloody hells. Don't worry, Dermon. I'll figure out some way to lead him clear of the bombs. Detectiving is so dangerous. What bombs? All I see are a bunch of coconuts. It's just, it's, it's all coconuts, really. Completely inconspicuous. I think the tide is rising. We, we really should move to higher ground. I mean, <laughs> I see you back there. Hello. No, sorry, not Shh. meaning to give your position. Right, sorry. I am merely a bush. Bush, 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 bush. I'm just bush, waving bush. at some trees, don't you worry. Bush, bush, bush. Those trees are my friends. We hang out all the time. How are you doing? Sway, 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 sway. <laughs> Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. <laughs> is it just me, or is there a bit of a chill in the air? Perhaps we should go someplace warm. Yes, yes. I, for one, welcome a respite from the sweltering heat. Besides, this will not take long. If you insist, Inspector. Oh, boy. 
Through the questioning of a brass blade attacked by our quarry, I have identified the three individuals most likely to be our thief in disguise. To wit, Morgant, Yalto Noto, and Lewinhart. The three of us shall split up, with each of us keeping watch over- <laughs> Are the two of you listening? Uh, of course, of course we are. Beg pardon, Inspector. Yes, yes. You look unwell, Miss Ellie. Perhaps you are right. I too feel a chill wind blowing in. Map, we should continue our conversation elsewhere. Ah, but there's no need. Wait here. I shall build us a fire. Ha 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 ha! Methinks the inspector has taken leave of his senses. The chances of locating a suitable kindling on these barren shores is infinitesimal. <laughs> oh no, check off stick. <laughs> Here we are. This piece of driftwood should serve perfectly. And as fortune would have it, I just happen to have a flint stone on my person. This is good. There is no cause for alarm. Tis not blood that courses through the inspector's veins, but ice. I could not fathom a series of events that would lead such a calm and composed individual to lose his firm grip on that fiery torch. Remarkable insight, Inspector. I must record these words for posterity. It's flying. Hmm. What have we here? Everything is proceeding according to my master plan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Could this be another challenge from the fiend? Surely you jest, Inspector. It looks nothing like his usual cards, see? Doubtless it's just the idle ravings of some madman. Yes, yes. Perhaps so. But we must exercise due caution. Ah, there are two more pages. Oh boy. Mm. <laughs> Give up hope. He of many faces will laugh last. It is not the Lapis Maiden alone that shall come to harm. It's more direct than his previous challenges, but there can be no doubt as to the sender. But what is this talk of another victim? The final page holds the answer, no doubt. The final page? Confounding Inspector Briardian will meet a fiery demise. Oh boy. the brand to the rescue you can do it hell
We're fine. <laughs> He's done it again. He's good. <laughs> Bless you. This man is indestructible. Yeah. Immortal. You saw through the fiend's ruse, but how? Uh, let's just call it reporter's intuition. Are you hurt? A ringing in my ears, but otherwise no worse for the wear. You, you have my gratitude. He can smile. Yay. This has all worked out. Hildebrand Manderville. Were you able to learn aught of the fiend who made this ignoble attempt on my life? I exhausted every effort, Inspector, yet I fear our quarry proves ever elusive. Excellent. I might have died of shock if you had. At any rate, our foe has revealed himself as no mere thief, but a madman who will resort to cold-blooded murder. We must redouble our vigilance, lest the others come to harm. Vigilance! Yes! Vigilance is the order of the day. What in the name of the gods? Those teeth! Those vegetables cost a fortune! And they're ruined! Ruined! One, they're coconuts. Two, they, they exploded. <laughs> agent of inquiry! More like agent of injury and incompetence! You are to re replace the supplies that you destroyed more before the banquet begins, or I will see the entire lot of you rot in a jail! Oh dear. I mean, you're like, your dad's rich. We're fine, right? We're fine. <laughs> um, oh, we should go speak with Lewin Hart. Right, okay. Yes. Let's see about those... Vegetable. Yeah, they were coconuts, weren't they? They were. I mean, maybe there's some like, maybe the vegetables vegetables were in the boxes, I guess. But yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Or maybe like, maybe it's like tomatoes and coconuts are just like one of those things that everyone thinks is a fruit, but secretly it's a vegetable. Oh yeah. I'm just oh, gonna gosh. assume that from now on. <laughs> hey, Lewinhart. What was that terrible explosion coming from the beach? Is everyone safe? Fear not. The fiend's artless attempt on my life has been thwarted. Sadly, your food supply did not escape unscathed. Master Guguremu hold, uh, bids that the damaged ingredients be replaced with all speed. Good gods! This is no thief. This is a madman. As for replacing the ingredients, I feel that will prove a difficult task. Those crates contained important vegetables of considerable rarity, you see. Vegetables that are in particularly short supply these days, what with the Mandragoras at large. Even if I were to place the order immediately, it would likely take days to arrive. The Mandragoras? I've heard of that fell band. Tell me, what manner of vegetables did they steal? The rarest was an import from the Far East. I do not recall the name, but it very closely resembled the Eorzean dragon pepper, save for its color, which was a deep purple. Methinks you dust worry too much, Master Lewinhart. Our course of action is clear. We need only storm into the den of these overgrown weeds and steal your precious purple dragon peppers right back. I would rather advise against that, Inspector. These are no ordinary mandragoras, but rather a bloodthirsty band of killers given succulent flesh. Even the brass blades of the Gerbera prove unable to resist them. 
Oh, ho! A formidable foe indeed. Were only there a brave soul in our midst, with a want for taking on fearsome enemies, with not a shred of concern for his own well-being. If only. Your eyes, friend, they speak to me. They say, I, yes, I shall vanquish these rogue festivals and deliver the purloined goods back to their rightful owner. I guess my face does th say that. It, <laughs> literally everyone else in the world thinks so. <laughs> You're truly a godsend, adventurer. One son, Heimel of the Yellow Jackets, has been charged with defending the roads of the Mandragoras. If anyone would have knowledge of their current whereabouts, it would be him. Without those ingredients, Master Guguremu is like to cook me instead. Please, friend, you're my only hope. A gentleman would never let his comrade face danger alone. Let us away to Limsa together. Sounds lovely. All right, then. To Limsa. There we are. Oh, yeah, this guy. So I... <laughs> I love when there's just like an NPC who's always standing around. You're used to just seeing him there. And then suddenly at some point a quest randomly involves him. And you're like, oh, hey, you. I see you around all the time. We've never talked. You do do stuff. Sometimes. If you've come for the Mandragoras, I fear you're half a bell too late. As were we, blast it all. To hear the poor merchant tell it. No, mo no sooner had he opened his cargo hold to check on a shipment of vegetables than did an onion turn on him. Screeching bloody murder. Fled his own vessel in sheer terror, he did. By the time he came to his senses, it had set sail without him. The merchant left for Aleport, hoping to recoup his losses. If you've a mind to go after the culprits, you might lend an ear to his sad tale. Ah, is the thrill of the chase not invigorating, friend? The ferry docked by Fisherman's Bottom will carry us to Aleport. Let us be swift on our way. Yes, let's. I mean, we just got here, but yes, let's. And here we are. How's it going, tiny trader? Tiny you look trader. tired. Eek, don't sneak up on me like that. I thought you were a feral turnip, a murderous eggplant, or something like that. Think it's digest, do you? You'd be singing a different tune if a shot of tomato juice took your, took out your eye as it did mine. My eye! By the time I regained me wits, they'd already set sail with me ship and me livelihood. I'm ruined, ruined. If I never see another bleeding onion to the end of me days, it'll be too soon. My goodness. This sounds serious. More details, please. The tiny trader would ask you to save the realm from a veg vegetal scourge. <laughs> to hear most say it, the Mandragoras are a nasty lot, a right pain in the arse to farmers and provisioners the realm over. But let me tell you, my friend, that ain't the least of it. Freeing their fellow fawns from the larder and the table is but the beginning. The bulbous blackguards have have a far grander scheme. Revolution! Oh. Madness, you say? Take a ferry to the Isle of Umbra and see with your own eyes a veritable vegetable kingdom where eggplants and turnips rule with an iron fist. Hmm? This muscle-bound fellow with a dim expression. I could swear I've seen his face somewhere before. Bugger me! If it ain't the undead overlord what fancies himself a gentleman inspector. Which would make you... Aye, could it be? The adventurer, what best did the thieving duelist in single combat? I guess I am that, huh? Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, bugger me and call me inspector. Tell me, is it true the duelist traveled with a demon bird whose crow could split the heavens? But that's neither here nor there. Look, I don't know about you, but I ain't so keen on the notion of calling a bloody tomato your grace. And that's exactly the fate we're in for if we don't nip the revolution in the bud. And I mean that literally. As we speak, the Mandragoras are planting themselves a whole army of their own kind on the Isle of Umbra. You'd be doing the whole realm a favor if you could go there and uproot them before the harvest comes. Many a case have I solved in my day, but I've not matched wits with sentient plant life before. This should prove quite exhilarating to the Isle of Umbra. I agree. Joe, did you ever play Final Fantasy XI? I've never played any other Final Fantasy. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's kind of cool. What's that like? <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I played Final Fantasy X a little bit. I made it to the jellyfish boss, and I never made it past it because I was a little dumb kid who didn't know how numbers work. <laughs> that's kind of wonderful. So these Mandragoras are a Final Fantasy XI enemy, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they're setting us up for a pretty tough 
a throwback to a boss encounter uh, that you had to do back then, fighting a whole lot of different flavors of them at once. And I never got super far in the game, but I certainly didn't beat it. Amazing. And this one's talking to us in PlayStation controller. <laughs> um, you feel a hostile gaze upon you. Mm -hmm. You ever feel like you're being watched by vegetables, Dan? I, I didn't until today. Vegetables are really like the threat today between these and the coconuts. Mm. Everything goes wrong when I come to this island. Like, it's always some scary threat that's a problem. Yeah, every time I look at my burger and I'm like, mm, that lettuce doesn't look quite right. <laughs> I've known for a long time that I was going to die to some sort of vegetable. <laughs> What would you think would be the least painful? Hmm, least painful vegetable death. Hmm. I want to say like a soft one, but it feels like the soft one would then like find some nastier way to come at me to make up for its, uh, <laughs> like physical strength. Like clearly the tomatoes are already doing it. They're like trying to like squirt acidic juice to take out an eye. And that sounds like much scarier than just being, I don't know, smashed by a gourd or something. Oh yeah, tomatoes are acidic, aren't they? I keep forgetting. And technically a fruit. We're really mix like mixing and matching our fruits and vegetables a lot in this Oh wait, yeah, they are fruits. Wait, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> hmm. Oh. You see, in Eorzea, coconuts <laughs> are technically vegetables. Tomatoes are fruit. Um, mantises get this big. Read a book. Yeah, and also, lucky for us, the fate seems to be going already. Oh, great. Perfect. The garlic jester. <laughs> the onion prince. And the mandragora queen. Perfect. Ah. This is so cute. And the eggplant knight. Uh, this is delightful. All of you hold still. It's harder to hit you when you keep moving. So these were from Final Fantasy XI, you say? So not these exactly. I think like this vegetable themed branch, not so much. The Mandragoras were a Final Fantasy XI enemy design, which I'm thrilled to see back. But uh, right. But I think that this, uh, they looked a lot closer to this uh, Mandragora queen minus the flower. Right, right, right. And I don't think, at least I don't recall for sure if they were actually looking like other vegetables, but I love this spin on it. It's delightful. And I assume, like with every other enemy in that game, they were very difficult to kill. Yep, yep, yep. There was no... Basically, if you're past level 10, uh, you can't do anything by yourself. Or at least you couldn't. They've they've changed a lot, but it's still... <laughs> it's still very solo unfriendly at large. Impeccably fought, my friend. I only wish I had seen the battle with my own eyes. You may go ahead to Costa del Sol. I shall be along as soon as I extricate myself. Absolutely. Sounds good. We'll meet you there, Inspector. And we're back. Lewinhart, good news, we've defeated vegetables. You return. I fear you might end up a tasty snack for the crazed head of cabbage. Not today. Maybe someday, but not today. Foodstuffs pilfered from the stores in Costa del Sol. Here you go. The stolen foodstuffs. You've saved my hide today. Oh, but I must see if those purple dragon peppers are intact. Master Guguremu is quite particular about his seasonings. Oh, can I come too? I've never seen a purple dragon pepper before. That wild vegetable chase was a pleasant aversion, but it is time we return to the case. Now there must be some clue that yet eludes us. Hmm, yes. Core, the peppers have changed color! What's this? Peppers that possess the same powers of disguise as our many-faced foe? A gentleman must needs investigate. Ooh. A striking shade of blue. Quite far from the purple that Master Lewinhar described. Perhaps we recovered the wrong crate. But look here, Inspector. The crate is clearly marked for Costa del Sol. How curious. Uh, did I say purple? Oh, I meant purplish blue, or a bluish purple. Uh, the two colors are quite similar when you think about it. These peppers have a most distinctive hue. No man could reasonably mistake it for any shade of purple. Unless they are colorblind. <laughs> or, yeah, that's actually possible. <laughs> Unless, of course, he was wearing a very particular sort of eyewear at the time. Ah. <sighs> 
Ha! The charade is up. After the man. It is as I suspected all along. The goggles have proved the key to cracking the case. With speed, Nashu. The fiend must be brought to justice. Ah, because he was wearing the red goggles. Ah, that's actually pretty clever. Clever yeah. that I've come to expect from this quest chain. <laughs> 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 All right, we're off. The game's afoot. And here we are. How's it going? You can run, but you cannot... Maybe one day, but not today. Not today. Ha ha ha! If you thought you could out-sprint this Mandeville man, you were sorely mistaken. For pilfering a priceless blade, threatening a maiden's virtue, and untold crimes against the law-abiding citizens of Eorzea, I, Hildebrand, agent of an inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, hereby placed you under arrest. Done in by a snipper. A fitting end for an ignoble thief. Let us see what lies behind the mask. Uh, where am I? Who who are you? Ha! Playing the fool will avail you not. I suggest you come willingly. A gentleman is not given to violence, but should you attempt to resist, I disavow personal responsibility for any shattered skulls and broken bones. Wait, I remember now. I was on my way to meet with Miss Arabella when... Uh, Miss Arabella, I must find her at once. Oh, my head. Hmm. It would seem that this man wears no mask. This is the true Luinard. I swear on my life that it is so. I was en route to the estate in Winepaw when one of the brass blades on patrol approached me. We exchanged greetings, and in the next instant he turned on me. I fought desperately to defend myself, even managed to drive a kitchen knife into the man's right hand. In the end, though, he proved too strong for me. Now that you mention it, the imposter was wearing gloves. I knew there was something suspicious about him. There is still time before the banquet begins. Knowing our quarry, he has doubtless already assumed a new identity. And yet he could not have foreseen this turn of events. It is unlikely that he had the time to thoroughly research his new target. Most importantly, we now know that the thief suffered a wound to his right hand. We need simply return to Costa del Sol and examine the hands of all present. An excellent plan, Inspector. While you do so, we shall accompany Lewenhart back to the estate that we might ensure Miss Arabella's safety. Ooh. <gasps> oh no. There they are. Oh no. <laughs> They're back for blood. <laughs> I have found you, my little ones. Let me guess. You seethe with anger at those that took from you what was yours. Ooh. Then it would appear our goals are in accord. Make for Costa del Sol and await my orders. When the time is right, revenge will be yours. 
I, for one, am happy to give up our uh, freedom to such adorable new rulers. I agree. I love them. And my nation is led by someone of the exact same height, so <laughs> we'll barely notice the difference. The game is afoot, inspectors. Now, what mask shall I wear to the ball? I'm so curious. Right? Isn't this like genuinely a good mystery? It's a pretty fun little mystery. All right, to Wineport. Oop, plants. <laughs> Hang on, sorry, here we are. Ah, hello. Miss Arabella, what are you doing out here? You must return to the estate at once. <sighs> oh, Lewin, always the warrior. Your concern is touching, but I'm a woman grown. Besides, I just wanted to see the flowers. Lovely those these flowers may be. They are as unsightly weeds when measured against your beauty. I am Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire. Please call me Hildy. The pleasure is mine, my lord. Much have I heard of your deeds. Tell me, are these rumors of a many-faced thief true? I fear they are, Miss Arabella, but still your gentle heart. For as long as Hildebrand is on the case, the fiend shall not lay a twisted finger upon you. This I swear on the Mandeville name. The gods smile on me indeed, to send such a strong and handsome gentleman as my com champion. Or companion, nah, champion, as my champion. And yet... <sighs> You seem pensive, milady. Is something the matter? To tell the truth, this marriage has been arranged against my wishes. I do not love Vanus. I have not even met him. He sent me this clasp as a betrothal gift. A treasure for my treasure, wear it always, the message said. I do not care how beautiful it is. It might as well be a golden shackle. Uh, Miss Arabella, you must not say such things. An arranged marriage to a youth you have not even met. Unconscionable! Father says that this marriage must happen, that it is for the future of the family trade. Spoken like a true old on. But if I may be bold, milady, would I be correct in assuming that you and your father are not related by blood? Quite so. Father found me amongst the beggars on Pearl Lane when I was just a babe. He took me in and raised me as his own. He took Lewin in as well, though as servant rather than son. You may think father a cold and miserly man, but to me he's the man who gave me warmth and hope where I had none. I will learn to love Vanus if that'll make father happy. You cannot be serious, Miss Arabella. You are a beautiful young woman with your whole life ahead of you. Surely you would not have to look far to find a gentleman with whom you would rather spend the rest of your days? If I have to spend another hour with you, I'm like to lose my wits, but... Anyway, we should return to Costa del Sol, see how the inspector's investigation fares. I, as well, must prepare for the banquet. Farewell, friends. Hmm. Sad. The closer this banquet gets, I'm excited. For everything to kind of explode. <laughs> With a maiden's virtue hanging in the balance, Hildebrand would hasten back to Costa del Sol. We've not a moment to lose, friend. The time for our final confrontation with the Fiend is nigh. Our foe has doubtless assumed a new identity, but have no fear. Upon our return to Costa del Sol, I shall employ the time-tested mandeville art of parley to cut through the Fiend's flimsy facade. Ooh. It is an art that I would impart to you as well, friend, though there will be time enough for that once our foe is in shackles and Miss Arabella is safe. No doubt it shall prove an invaluable, as invaluable in your adventure as it has in my investigations, or failing that, serve to entertain you when you have nothing better to do. 
But I digress. A gentleman must away to Costa del Sol. The fair maiden's life hangs in the balance. Nashu, Miss Ellie, with me! I would love to learn that skill. That sounds great. But okay, to Costa del Sol, quickly! And we're back. Briardian, how goes all? You can talk to me if you want to. <laughs> I don't know why, I'm just so bad at selecting things lately. Inspector Briardian, I have seen to the maiden's safety. Miss Arabella will be along soon. How fair is your investigation? I've canvassed the grounds, but none of the guests are concealing their hands. How can this be? The thief must be somewhere. Miss Arabella just left her estate, I hear. I suppose we'll find out soon enough if her beauty is truly a match for our own. <laughs> There's no time. Without the thief in custody, we cannot risk allowing Miss Arabella to take the stage. But, but Inspector, Vanus and his family will not take kindly to his betrothed's absence. <laughs> that is nothing of my concern. Besides, doubtless the Inspector here will think of something. Me? What do you propose? You're the expert at crafting diversions. Can't you just knock something over, blow something up, or the like? You know, like you always do? Inspector Briardian, I knew the day would come that you would recognize my many talents. Worry not about Master Vanus. Yes, for the sake of the maiden, a gentleman will do what must needs be done. The poor Soplex, even the wits to know when he's being insulted. Now, to the task at hand. We must find a way to conceal Miss Arabella's true identity. Not far from here are the servants' quarters. There should be a change of clothes lying about. Perfect. Dermon, find some suitable ordinary garb and deliver it to Miss Arabella outside the gates. I shall proceed with the investigation. Okay. Let's see. Got any of your old level one gear lying around? Yeah, you'd think. Probably. <laughs> Back in my glamour chest somewhere. I don't think they'll let me use that. Mm -hmm. You, do you have boring... like level one looking gear... It's an emergency. Has the Lapis Maiden arrived yet? I simply must look upon her beauty for myself. Servant's garb, you say? I much prefer what you are wearing, but we certainly have enough rags to go around. Here you go. Do with them as you will. Thank you. I will trust sight unseen that these are perfect. And fit. And fit, also. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Everything works out. When Hildy is about. Greetings, friend. Uh, what's this you have for me? It's servant's garb sewn in a com uh, competent fashion by a reasonably talented tailor using materials of a satisfactory quality. <laughs> These garments have been kept in acceptable shape and more than likely command an average to fair price. <laughs> <laughs> Completely <laughs> inconspicuous. <laughs> I love their text description so much. Servant's garb? But why? Miss Arabella. With the thief still at large, the risk of letting you be seen is too great. Change into these clothes, and promise that you'll not leave my sight. But the ceremony. Father will be furious, and Lord Vanus. We're dealing with a man who tried to blast me to the heavens, and almost succeeded. We cannot exercise enough caution. As for the ceremony, I've entrusted the matters to a certain gentleman. You need only concern yourself with your own safety. We should do as the inspector says, Miss Arabella. Your life is more important than this marriage, or whatever profit your father stands to gain from it. Lewin, if father heard you say such things... I should have said them long ago. By not doing so, I have put your life in danger. But besides, we have not one, but two skilled inspectors on the case. It will not be long until the fiend is brought to justice. And at least three or four, like, <laughs> assistants who are... here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're there too. <laughs> Present. Very well. I shall retreat to the carriage. Pray, wait for me here. You've got two skilled inspectors and at least three tertiary characters. <laughs> my apologies for the delay. Uh, what should I do with my banquet dress, Inspector? Dermon, bring Miss Arabella's dress to that bumbling inspector. I dare not speculate as to how he intends to see to his task, but I would imagine he requires all the help he can get. Now, let's return before the festivities begin. Thank you, and if I may say, looking average. <laughs> All right. 
Whatever we're doing, I'm sure it's about to work. And it's so pretty out here. Yes. I'm just not... I'm really not used to good weather. I could get used to it, but I feel like I shouldn't. The great weather for a wedding. Mm-hmm. Ah, you return. Me? I was in the act of formulating a master plan to distract Master Varnus at the ceremony. Is there aught I might do for you? Well, I've got an expertly tailored dress certain to make eyes bulge and hearts stop. What do we do with this? Why, this is Miss Arabella's dress. I must admit it, it to some confusion as to what to do with it. But worry not, I shall take it into safekeeping. And with that, I must attend to Master Vanus before the ceremony begins. Worry not, friend. I assure you that Inspector Briardian and I have the situation entirely under control. Why not find yourself a seat and enjoy the festivities? You know, don't mind if I do. Nice and low pressure. Get to sit back and relax. Watch somebody else do all the work. That's great. I never get to do this. Mm -hmm. Is this what it's like being around me all the time? I could get used to it. <laughs> We get to be the follower for once. Yeah. Curses. How am I supposed to find my man with all these people milling about? Friends, family, business associates, tis an honor and a pleasure to welcome one and all to Costa del Sol for today's feast co-hosted by the Brugere Consortium and the East Aldenard Trading Company. We trust that you've been enjoying fine food, fine spirits, and profitable conversation. The Lapis Maiden. If even half the tales of her beauty are true, Vanus is the luckiest bastard in the realm. Yalto Noto, Sainana, honored guests. It's a great pleasure to announce the betrothal of my son, Vanis, future chair of the Brugere Consortium, to Arabella, daughter of Master Guguremu and of the Eastern Aldenard Trading Company. The couple would exchange their eternal vows here today, but that the happiness that is theirs may usher in a new era of prosperity for one and all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present my son's lovely bride, the Lapis Maiden, whose beauty minstrels will sing of, of for ages to come. Damn you, Hildebrand Manderville, you had one job. She's... she's beautiful. <laughs> Were the rabble expecting otherwise? She is my bride, after all. Milady, they say your beauty transcends even the boundaries of time. When we are wed, you will want for nothing. Pray, give me, give your hand unto me. My sun and stars, yes, yes, a thousand times yes. I am yours and shall be forevermore. Such quick thinking and improvisation on this one. Completely seamless. What have you done with my bride, you cross-dressing deviant? Hey, be nice. What, she's right there. <sighs> Not quite what I had intended, but I suppose it serves our purposes. Fear not, ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Arabella is safe and sound. I, Hildebrand, Agent of Inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, have but assumed the Maiden's appearance to ensnare the vile fiend who would, who would take aim at her life. And he makes it look good, what's more. Yeah, look at that. The fiend who now lies defenselessly before me. The game is up, Vanus, or shall I call you by another name? The Thief of Many Faces. Oh, look at his earrings. It's lovely. <laughs> I, I love the cuts to Nashu sleeping every time. Me? A thief? Are you mad?
It appears that my masterful deductions have proved beyond the grasp of your mind. Very well, allow me to elucidate. While there is not a soul in this realm who has not heard of the tales of Miss Arabella's beauty, there are but two men in here in Costa del Sol who has gazed upon her lovely visage before today, her father, Guguremu, and her steward, Lewinhart. As you yourself admitted on multiple occasions, Master Vanus, you were to have your first glimpse of your bride-to-be today. Considered in this light, would you not say that your reaction upon seeing my face was most unnatural? He has a point there. That is a good point. Who else could see through my ingenious disguise? Who could have known at a glance that I was not the fair maiden? None save you, ye of a thousand faces. And anyone else with half their wits about them? Dare you make a mockery at my wedding? God, arrest that pervert at once. Lock him up in a jail and throw away the key. Arabella, oh, thank the gods you're safe. Come with me quickly. There's a dangerous madman about. Oh, the necklace. Oh, the necklace. A glove on his right hand. Could it be? Oh, hey, my trick. Ooh. They're good. <laughs> the man is a fool, but it would have behooved you to listen to him. Alas, you did not, and what is yours is now mine. Uh, that's the thief! Stop wasting your time with that imbecile and arrest him! Oh no, the magic ores! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> They're here to be adorable and chaotic. Honestly, this wedding's only getting better with every passing surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be at this wedding. Yeah, what a good wedding! You came all this way for me. You love me. You really, really love me. Okay, well, that's a little mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's th that that joke is a little in poor taste and uh, of its time, we'll say. Yeah, that's the that is kind of like the one thing I've of, of, uh, often heard about the uh, Realm Reborn little string of Hildebrand quests that there's like, it's, and it's mostly this little segment that's a little bit in not a uh, favored taste. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Mm hmm. The attention is most flattering. But I've taken what I came for, and now I must away. My lords, my ladies, till we meet again. <laughs> Aw, at least she's enjoying herself. Yeah. She gets it, it's a good wedding. Yeah. I think everything that happened made this wedding better. Like, oh, so many weddings you go to, they're all wonderful events, but they do kind of just, like, run together, right? Try to tell them apart. <laughs> try, yeah. like, try confusing this wedding with any other one you've ever been to. If I had a wedding where a bunch of sentient <laughs> vegetables came and crashed the party, I'd be, I'd be stoked. Heck yes. <laughs> I hear that the real Vanus was found bound and gagged in a storage room. Truly, Miss Arabella, I am sorry. For what, milady? The banquet was more exciting than I ever could have hoped for. Vanus and his father were furious, of course, and our marriage has been called off. But perhaps it is for the best. 
I would find my way to make father happy by living my life as I would live it. It is you, Inspector Hildebrand, who taught me this lesson. We could all learn a thing or two from Hildebrand. We could. For the love of God, somebody find him a change of clothes. No. no. <laughs> but one thing still puzzles me. The chief's challenge said that, uh, or the thief's challenge said that he would steal the Lapis Maiden's virtue. Yet in the end, he took only her neck piece. Now that you mention it, Master Guguremu told me that the clasp, told me about the clasp when it first arrived. Engraved with the mark of the sun goddess, it is one of the most treasured pieces from the Brugere collection, known by many as Azima's Virtue. Oh. The Maiden's Virtue indeed. When the next challenge comes, we must take extra care to read between the lines. Is it gonna be? What is it gonna be? Find the next clue. <laughs> oh no! Oh, rest in peace, Onion Knight. Over here, Inspector. It says, uh, made you look. <laughs> they are good. The fiend plays us for fools. Give that to me at once. When next we meet, I shall come to claim the victor's spoils. <laughs> Another riddle. If nothing else, it appears the thief has abandoned any foolish notions of assassination. Of my assassination. Still, we must ever be on guard. The fiend attempted murder once, he may very well do so again. Verily, Inspector, I must agree. One can never be too wary when dealing with a murderer. Hear me, man of a thousand faces. You sealed your fate when you called me out by name. Mark my words, when next we meet, you will be mine. Yes, it was the Phantom Thief who was to blame for the bomb. Uh, truly, verily, indubitably, the Phantom Thief. Most certainly. Ha 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 ha. Mystery person. Yes, the mystery's not yet solved. Who is this villain? Getting closer. Bit by bit. But I think we've completed today's chapter. Let's get ourselves a preview. A parley minigame? <laughs> yep. You've unlocked the parley minigame. Entertain yourself, as many a Manderville man has before you, by opening the toy chest in any in-room. To the victor goes a priceless treasure. While the smile of a champion holds secrets untold. Are eight legs better than two? Can a Mandeville man triumph over terrors and win the day? Hildebrand will return in the Colosseum conundrum, and there was a familiar face in there for certain Final Fantasy fans. Yes. That perked their interest. The key to the next case is also the key to the storeroom. Be sure not to lose it. Wait, it's a real key and a figurative one? At the same time? Is that even possible? I guess we'll find out next time. Oh, these goofs.
Holy scoops. Well, there's another episode done, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We've still another episode or two of Manderville nonsense to be doing, and we will start back to that next time. Do take care, all of you. Have yourselves a good little weekend, and we will see you when we return. Goodbye. Bye.